All right, so in this example, we are looking at a population of beetles um, that currently has 55 um, and has an intrinsic growth rate of 100% each generation. Uh, environment can sustain a maximum of 160 beetles. Uh, so we want to find the population of the next three generations. To solve this problem, we look at the logistic growth model, which you can see here, um, where uh, P sub zero is the initial population, um, R is the intrinsic growth rate, and K is the carrying capacity. So for our example, um, looking at the variables, we want to get in terms of our variables. So Y represents the population, oops, population of the model. So we know we are looking at dy dt n is actually our time in this case. So we are looking at dy dn being equal to the rate times population y 1 minus population over the carrying capacity, which in our case we know is 160 beetles. So we can write over 160 as our K. I guess I could have just wrote K since I just wrote R, but we do know these values or what these values represent. And I'll write that here. For example, we know that K was 160 total beetles for carrying capacity. R is 100% intrinsic rate, so that's just 1.00 as a number. Um, and also, because it might be useful later, the initial population at n equals 0 is 55 beetles. Uh, so, with that being said, we can rewrite our equation. All I'm going to essentially do here is plug in 1 for R, um, which I could have just done already, but I didn't. And that is our differential equation for this problem, which describes the rate that the uh, beetle's population is growing. Uh, so, what we can do is start now by, I already have some stuff written down to save time, um, get the equation as one fraction as you can see here, uh, just a common denominator, um, and then getting it as one fraction. We know our initial population of beetles is 55, and we're going to use the method of kind of successive iterations here. There's, I wrote first way uh, because we're going to do it two ways, and the first way is just by kind of adding this rate, since we know the growth rate is based off of this equation and we know this initial value, we could find or we can approximate the next value by the next generation, y sub 1, based off of the initial population plus the growth rate um, at that point. So, doing that, what I can do, I'm plugging this stuff in, I will have 55 beetles, the initial value, plus
plus, and then dy dn um, of the initial value is going to be 160 times 55 minus 55 squared divided by 160. And when you essentially plug this in the calculator, which is what I would do, you get a value of 91.09375. And of course, that represents the population of beetles. Right? So, really, we would express that as a whole number, but. I'll just leave it as a decimal for now. And then the second y sub 2, the second generation, or the next generation following y sub 1, uh, we would, similar to the last example, or the last uh, generation, we start off at that generation's total, plus the rate, which again, we know as our differential equation up here. Um, so... And that's what we will use, and um, I already forgot my number, so let me scroll up a little bit. So, doing that, we know we will have uh, 91.09375, and I'm going to put this plus down here because I probably will run out of room. Plus the values, when you plug in a 0, a y of 1, uh, that is a typo. Let me clean this up really quick. I don't know why I put um, 0, y sub 1, it's 1, comma, y sub 1. Um, Plugging those values in, we have 160 times 91.09375 minus 91.09375 squared, all divided by 160. And again, when you plug that into your calculator, you get y sub 2 being equal to um, 130.324544. And again, that represents beetles. And again, similar to the previous generation, we would probably express that as a whole number, not a decimal. Uh, and then finally, the last but not least, uh, generation y sub 3 similar and again let me clean up my little typo there uh, at n equals 2 uh, y, like a y of 2 um, so similar to the last example to get the next generation's approximation we get use the previous previous result, y sub 2's generation, plus the rate at that point of 2y of 2. Uh, so we will then plug that stuff in. So y sub 2, whoops, y sub 2 is equal to not y sub 2, it's y sub 3. <laughs> uh, y sub 2 is equal to y sub 3 is equal to 130, which is y sub 2. Point three, two, four, five, four, four plus, and again we're plugging it into our differential equation that's above us. Uh, let me just show you that since I have repeatedly said incorrect things. 
on the last minute. <laughs> so here, here's our rate, and we are plugging in the previous generation's information to get Y sub 3 generation. And when we do that, we will plug this in and we get um, 160 times 130.324544 minus 130.324544. Squared divided by 160. And again, plugging it into the calculator, we will get a value, and that value is 154.4960496 beetles. And similar to the previous generations. You probably wouldn't say this is a decimal number. You would say it is a whole number. Um, and that is the problem. So, if you notice, there is a second way to do this, um, of which I will do in another video. So, due to time, I don't want to keep these videos being so long. So, I will do it next time, and it will involve... Uh, leave separation of variables and partial fractions. So see you next time.